right, everybody, let's get this meeting on the show on the road. We've got uh, for our public workshop today, Margo Yap, Principal Vice President of NCE <coughs> Richmond, California. Via the internet. Okay. Can, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Good. Well, good, good afternoon, everyone, and I apologize. I can't be there in present. Um, this is, uh, I think, the first time I've missed the actual meeting, but uh, I think with the wonders of technology, I can still share with you a story. Um, and I, since I can't see you, if you do have questions, um, please um, interrupt, and I will be happy to answer anything um, that you might, uh, any questions you might have. Okay. Uh, ready to go? Yes. All right. So many of you, I think, have heard this um, uh, story before, and uh, what we are going to do is talk a little bit more, uh, give you an update on the statewide assessment and share with you some of the um, uh, new information that we found, particularly as it affects um, uh, uh, SB1 funding. And uh, just for those of you who have not uh, heard this before, I just wanted to share again, you know, the, this project has been, it's a decade long. This is the 10th um, year that we have done this project um, update. And uh, the sponsors are the you know, California State Association of Counties, uh, the League of California Cities, of course, and then the um, uh, uh, major players of regional transportation planning agencies that, such as Kern Cog, who contribute to this program, um, the Rural County Task Force, and of course, um, CX. So, again, to refresh everyone's memory, you know, we had some very clear objectives um, that were given to us by the Oversight Committee, and that was to try and document what things look like for the entire local street and road uh, system statewide. Um, the biggest point, of course, was what does it cost? How much does it cost to maintain it? Um, that includes, of course, the bridges and the other essential components of the transportation <coughs> system. And then for the last um, five cycles, we've always tried to answer what is that funding shortfall? And then for the first time this year, what we wanted to answer the question was, if Prop 6 does pass, what are those consequences or impacts on our local network? And I've tried to um, extract two things. One is, of course, a statewide story, but then also uh, the particular aspects of Falcon County. So again, as a refresher, I think I wanted to share with all of you, you know, the importance of local roads. Um, many of you have heard me say this before, you know, but um, in the morning when we wake up and we open our front door, all of us are going to be using a locally owned facility, whether we uh, take the bus to work, uh, catch the train, drive, or bicycle, we are going to be using a local in, um, facility. And that local facility is a huge proportion of the state's network. If you look at this pie chart, you know, 85% of the roads in California are owned by cities and counties, such as, you know, Kern County and Bakersfield. Um, most of us think of roads, I think, as state highways, but honestly, that's only about 10% of the, of the network. So one of the things we always do every two years is we set up an online survey on our website and we ask agencies such as um, uh, your cities and the county to respond and to tell us you know, information about their infrastructure network. And then our job really then is to aggregate all this information and try to summarize it and put it into pieces that are understandable. So if you look at this chart, uh, this little table, what it really just shows is that, um, first of all, there's an overwhelming number of cities and counties who participate in the survey. Um, in this last go around, we had about 90% uh, of the 539 cities and counties respond. And in Kern County, I want to congratulate all of you. I want to specifically thank you, uh, your staff, for responding. Um, we have 100% response rate from Kern County cities and counties and the county, and that is a first. The part that's so important about this response and why I spend a little bit of time on it is because in order to come up with good conclusions or good um, analysis, we need to have good data. And we can't get good data if only 1% of the cities respond. Um, if you look at this pie chart, what that tells uh, you is that of the 90% cities and counties that did respond, they represented about 96% of the miles. That's an overwhelming number of miles. Um, and then for those agencies who did not respond this year, uh, about 4% uh, 
had data from previous surveys. So we used the old data and extrapolated it um, to today and, and aggregated it as well. Only seven cities have never responded, and those are all small cities, you know, less than 100 miles, a population less than 50,000. Uh, in many cases, there's no full-time public works director or city engineer, um, and uh, the only full-time staff might be the city clerk. So we respect that. Um, it is what it is, but uh, they don't really represent a, a, a significant portion. It's um, less than 1%. And I'm going to pause at each one of these slides to in, in case any of you have a have questions. So far so good? Right. So in our study, what we try to do is we break up the, the transportation um, network into three distinct pieces. The first is pavement, because that's usually the most um, extensive and the most expensive uh, part of the infrastructure network. And for this, what we wanted to make sure is we got good data, and again, our criteria uh, for determining whether good data exists or not is whether the agency used a payment management software. Um, and you can, and Bakersfield, for instance, uh, many of the cities in, in Kern County, they do, you do use a, a payment management software, which is mm -hmm. wonderful, because that allows me then to have some confidence um, in the information that is presented. And if you look at this pie chart, what that tells you is the red part of the pie, 51% of them use a, a software called Street Saver, another 19% uses Micropaver, et cetera. And it doesn't really matter what software they use um, as long as they use some systematic way of collecting that information. And of the 86% that do use some kind of software, that represents 96% of the total miles, which gives us a lot of confidence and credibility um, in the data that we got and also in the analysis that we were able to do. So because most of um, the agencies have some sort of a payment management system, we're able then to answer the first question, which is what are the pavement conditions statewide? And we have a scale from 0 to 100. Now you can see that 100 is good or excellent, a 0 is very poor or failed, and I have a couple of pictures of roads that represent those two extremes. Um, and, and some of you have heard me say this before, but you can look at this as um, analogous to a math grade. And the question I'm often asked then is, well, what's a good grade to be at? And you'll notice that we have identified the green roads are as good to excellent, the blue we would consider fair or at risk, and then um, the orange or red as poor or very poor. And um, the question people ask is, well, where should my city be? Where, where, which part of the of should we be at? And I like to use the analogy of um, my daughter, uh, who is now um, 14, and and she, uh, if she were to come home one day and tell me that um, she got a 70 on her math test, um, I, I can react in two ways um, as a parent. I can say that, you know what, that's not too bad, right? I mean, I, I'm an engineer, but I have to admit that I was never particularly good at math in school. And I might say that's acceptable. Um, another parent might say that, you know what, you might need to work a little bit harder if you want to get to college. So what I'm indicating to you is that what we present in our report is a number or a rating. But it's a policy decision despite if that is acceptable or not. And so that policy decision is in front of you. What I am going to share, however, is the consequences, the financial consequences of deciding what policy or decision you arrive at. So when we looked at the entire state, Back in 2008, the average was about 68, smidgen below the 70. So we, we considered it fair or at risk. And in 2012 and 2014, it dropped a couple of points. Um, and today, in, uh, in 2018, you can see that it was very close to, to the, um, the number in, in 2016, 65.4. Now it's 64.7. It dropped half a point. We rounded that up. It's about 65. And, and so the question then is, is 65 acceptable? Um, what I want to show you is here's a picture of what a 65 looks like. And most drivers would look at that and say, well, that looks pretty good. There's a crack down it. Um, there's actually some raveling going on, some um, alligator cracking just beginning to start in some of the wheel path. But there's no potholes. It's a reasonably smooth ride. Um, the bicyclists are going to be comfortable. And that is, is that acceptable? Well, what happens, of course, is that the condition of this road has some financial consequences, uh, which I want to, to would like to share with you. 
when we take that average of 65 and start teasing it apart um, and look at it county by county, it can tell a different story. This is 2008, when the average was 68. And you can see that you know about a third of the counties in California were you know green, uh, in the good condition. Uh, there's a few, a handful of red counties, and everyone else was sort of in the blue area, which is the at risk for the fair. So that was an average of 68 back in 2008. Ten years later, this is what the picture looks like. We only dropped three points from 68 to 65, but look at it piece by county, and the picture is quite dramatic because you can see more than two thirds of the state of the state counties are now in the fair or at risk category. The number of counties that are in red have increased um, and in, in Kern has stayed solidly blue and I'll share some additional data uh, in a second. But, but you can see that that average doesn't tell you everything. You need to look at it in, in the little pieces which I've shared with you right now. Kern, County and on average went from 66 to 63. So again, it does look like a big drop. Uh, interesting um, concept. This is a um, a uh, blow up of uh, what Kern County looks like, and you can see uh, we tried to separate out the blues to, into um, slightly different categories. The blue category, the light blue, is um, means that the average is in the 60s. The dark blue means that the average is in the 50s. Um, and although the average for Kern County uh, in plus the cities is 63, you can see that we have some pockets of red. You know, Ridgecrest um, is uh, in, in the poor category, um, and then there's a couple of uh, other ones uh, right in the middle of the state. Now, Bakersfield, uh, with the largest city, um, is actually in the 60s. So, you know, now it's a good question to ask, is 63 good or bad? Um, what I will point out is that every agency in, on this probably has some good roads, but you probably also have some really bad roads. Any questions so far? Okay. So what we did was we added up all the needs for every 539 cities and counties, and it came out to about $61.7 billion. This is actually a little bit lower than what it was in 2016, and there's one reason for it. Cities and counties, I think, have been very creative in trying to stretch every existing dollar um, that we have. And the biggest way to stretch the dollar for roads is to come up with technological efficiencies. In other words, come up with pavement strategies that um, can be that's cheaper and more, co or essentially more, just more cost effective. And that predominantly is recycling. In other words, we're reusing a road like this, for instance, when you look at it, we're reusing the existing material, we're pulverizing it, we're adding some asphalt binder to it, and we're putting it back where it was. So that saves a lot of money. We don't have to go to quarry. Uh, we don't have a lot of haul, um, a lot of trucking costs, and we can reduce the cost and reuse that material. So more and more agencies are doing that, and this is the first time this year our analysis included some estimates of what those efficiencies are, and so just based on that alone, we were able to bring down some of the paper needs. So now if I look at the same map of California, and I look at county by county, this represents the total need, 61.7 billion. But you can see that it's not evenly distributed. Um, the dark brown counties, such as Kern, have very high needs, greater than $2 billion over the next 10 years. These are all 10-year needs. And then the uh, light um, yellow counties have less than $500 million. It, it doesn't tell the whole story, of course, um, but what I can say is that, generally speaking, if you're in a major metropolitan area, such as Los Angeles or Orange County or the Bay Area, you're going to have higher needs. Um, or in Kern, you have a very large a network, in fact, I think the county is one of the largest networks in, in the whole state, you have a significant infrastructure uh, that you need to maintain. So it adds up. What I wanted to share, though, with this needs is I want to share it and couple it with the funding that is available. So the next picture here shows an interesting one. What this shows is how much of those needs are met by current dollars. And if we were to now look at, say, Humboldt County in the very far north, 
Um, they were very, they had less than $500 million worth of needs, but given the existing funding that they have, less than 20% of that is met. For Kern County, it's in the orange category, less than 40% of their needs are met with current funding. And when I say current funding, I am including SB1, all the, the next 10 years projections. So even with SB1, it takes us, it improves a lot, but it doesn't fix everything that we, we needed to fix. The other part that we always forget about sometimes, of course, is unpaved roads. Um, the county obviously has lots of gravel roads out there. Uh, when we add up everything in the state, we've got another almost 10,000 miles of gravel roads, and th that requires almost another billion dollars um, over the next 10 years to maintain and to repair. So let me pause here for a second and see if there's any questions um, on the roads component. So far so good? Okay. So the next part of this infrastructure co uh, category is what we call essential components. And the essential components are just about everything else you can think of. The signals, the safety, the bicyclists, the sidewalks, the curb ramps, the signs, the storm drains, um, all of this is supporting and part of the transportation infrastructure. And those have needs as well. And when we add them up, it's about $34 billion. Um, a little bit more than 2016. Uh, the funding also did increase a little bit uh, because some of the SB1 money came, came to this category too. Um, so it went up too. Um, but you can see that's not quite enough. And in the case of, again, if I look at the, the, the essential component needs, we can see that predominantly they tend to be in the Bay Area and in Southern California, um, a little bit in the Central Valley, and for Kern County, you'll need about $500 million just on these other pieces. So we have to add this to the paper. The last component of the infrastructure is local bridges. And local bridges, are, uh, uh, I'm sure you're, you're all aware, are a very critical component. Um, you know, if, if a bridge fails on an interstate, there was always an ability to detour and it's an all, always an alternate route. But some of the rural bridges, um, Stanislaus County, for instance, you know, shared with me some of the stories is that if a local bridge fails, a resident may have to detour 30 or 40 minutes before they can get to where they want to go, um, simply because of the lack of alternate routes. So those are pretty significant consequences for residents and businesses. Well, how many local bridges do we have? Um, this is a, a, a chart that shows every bridge in every single county, and you can see Kern County is in the little red oval, uh, about 280 bridges. Overall, statewide, we have over 12,000. So you, you, you have a very strong um, uh, uh, percentage of, of what those bridges are. And important part of local bridges is their age. Uh, this chart shows what the age is. The red bars are what the, the average, uh, the distribution of age in 20. Uh, 12, the gray bars is 2016, and the blue bars are in 2018. And the key takeaway from this is that if you look at the uh, right-hand side of the chart, everything is getting older. So the blue bars are getting taller on that end. So more than half the state bridges, local bridges, not state bridges, just local bridges, are more than 50 years old. And when you factor into the fact that most local bridges were designed with a 50-year design life, you know, essentially they have reached the end of the design line. Now, I think the good part is that the bridge engineers are inherently very conservative, and so they, even though the design life was 50 years, many of these bridges have lasted longer than that, but they don't last forever. And so there is uh, some need out there. Um, this is a, um, a, 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 a snapshot of all the bridges in Kern County, and uh, this is measured by something called the sufficiency rating, and really, we can think of it as good fair poor. All the bridges in the green part of the, of the chart are in good condition. The yellow part is fair. And thank goodness, in the red, uh, red part of, the, of this chart, there's only really two bridges um, in Kern County that require, that would be considered poor. Um, I have a few quick charts to show sufficiency rating. Um, but the purple line shows the existing funding available uh, for bridges today. And you can see that over the next 10 years, given that level of funding, it's going to continue dropping. So we need to be at where the orange line is, which is about $600 million, essentially a doubling of the existing funding level. Um, the other measures that Caltrans uses, this is the health index, same story. And then I think this is the part that matters probably most to the public. It's 
how many bridges are in full condition. Uh, statewide, it's about 10, 11 percent right now, but under this existing funding level, it's going to grow dramatically to um, almost 40 percent. So again, the, the bridge needs, we can see that um, predominantly, again, Bay Area, metropolitan area, Southern California, you know, that where the most of the bridge needs are Kern County, we need about $31 million. So the last part of the question that we had to answer was, um, uh, what are the impacts if Prop 6 passes? Um, and I think um, you probably all have heard about Prop, Prop 6. I've, I've seen some uh, um, graphics that have been produced about the impacts locally on Prop 6. Um, Rob Ball shared with me the AFCE report um, that, that was completed for Kern County as well, uh, which shows some pretty um, um, uh, data that, that supports many of the things that we are saying. Although their report does look at aviation and transit and some other components as well. Um, let me pause real quickly. If, are there any questions so far? Okay. So, in the looking at funding uh, consequence, financial consequences, we first looked at well, how much money do we have? And this uh, chart shows the trend from back all the way back to 2008. So, the blue part right there is federal funding. Um, the green part is local funding, like local self tax measures, for instance. And then the red part is state, which is primarily gas tax. And then the low pink part um, is the new funding, which is SD1. So a couple of key points. One is the public may think that Washington gives us a lot of money for roads. Not really. Not for local roads. They may go to the highway system, but it doesn't really come in for local roads. The preponderance of funding for local roads has always been the gas tax and whatever local sales tax measures that have been passed. Uh, and you can see that the trend it, you know, the money was kind of flat, it's growing a little bit overall, but the trend was for the green part of the pie, the local um, sales tax measures that have been passed in many parts of the county, uh, many counties, that was growing um, over the last uh, six, seven years. But SB1 is a significant source. If you look at it, that thing part of the, of the chart, you know, will in improve, will add about a billion dollars a year just to roads alone. And then another half a billion goes to some of the other uh, components. So let's see what happens. So what we did was we added up again, you know, all the funding available, uh, including SD1, and we projected. Over the next year, the benefits of SD1 is that it maintains the system statewide. Things don't get significantly better, but it's a status quo. So there are two things on this chart to look at. The line represents the pavement conditions. We fluctuate around 64, 65 um, over the next 10 years, which is exactly where we are. The bar chart at the bottom is the unfunded backlog. And again, you can see it's pretty stable, 33, 35, 36 billion dollars. Um, it doesn't grow, um, it doesn't get bet uh, worse, but generally speaking, you know, we are speaking about uh, uh, maintaining the system with the existing funding level. However, if Prop 6 does pass, extrapolating the and if uh, PCI drops to 57 in 10 years, and more importantly, the unfunded backlog begins to grow. And this number is in real 2018 dollars. In other words, I don't have inflation in here. If I threw in inflation there plus the cost of construction, those numbers will grow even more. But even if everything stayed constant, we can see that it grows from 35 billion to about 47 billion. So that's a 12 billion dollar increase. And then finally, um, this is the chart that um, uh, we have used over and over again through the state legislature as well as the CTC because they always ask, well, how much do you really need to bring it back up to what we would consider best management practices? Um, and we can see that um, in 10 years, we would need about $6.8 billion a year to bring it up to in the mid-80s or thereabouts. Um, we would be able to eliminate our unfunded shortfall. And then after that, and this is the important part, after that, it only takes about $2.5 billion to maintain it at that condition. And that's an important part because maintaining a road, a good road, is obviously a lot less than trying to reconstruct the bad road. The other part I wanted to share with you is just to kind of look at the breakdown of the whole network, you know, into good, fair, poor. Um, again, you know, green is good, um, fair is blue, and, and red is poor. 
And you can see currently, if I, again, we look at the entire state, 55%, a little bit over half of the, the roads are in good condition. Um, about almost a quarter is in um, poor condition. And if we stayed, we kept SB1 and stayed with the existing funding, even though the average PCI stays the same, we're making some improvements. Now two thirds of the road network will be in good condition. Uh, we're starting to shrink the red part of the pie. We can't get rid of it completely, but we're beginning to shrink it. And this is, I think, um, a performance or, 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 or a, a something that the public can really recognize. However, if Prop 6 passes, we can now see that the green part of the pie begins to shrink. And more importantly, the red part of the pie begins to shrink. And those are the trends that we want to avoid. So when I add up everything, um, all the needs for the pavements, the essential components, and the bridges, there's two pieces. Uh, I wanted to share with you what it was in 2016. And you can see that those um, uh, pavement needs drop from 70 to about 61, 62 billion dollars, and that is primarily due to the technological efficiencies that I mentioned earlier. In other words, I, I, I call it, you know, the stretching the dollars um, that all the cities and counties have been very good at doing. Um, then we throw in, of course, additional money, and we find that our shortfall of 55 billion has now decreased. So when people ask, is SB1 going to make a difference? The answer is absolutely yes. It will make it different. So um, the data I've shared with you is hot off the presses. Uh, very few people have seen this yet. Um, we haven't even released the final report, so in many ways I'm, um, I'm being a little, perhaps a little premature in sharing this with you. Uh, we do expect the report to be published uh, or to be released in the week of October 9th, and um, at that time our website will be updated with uh, information with the final report, maps, uh, fact sheet, talking points, um, that you can take and use um, and share with uh, um, the public if you wish. So with that, um, I'm open to uh, any questions. Any questions from the board? Just a comment. Comment? Margo, this is Jennifer Wood, Mayor of California yes. City. Uh, this is my last uh, 20, uh, my last street needs assessment. And I want to tell you that your report, even though it's got some grim news in it, um, is one of the ones I've always looked for every year uh, to tell us, you know, how how poorly we're doing or how well we're doing. And um, it's very clear from the information you presented tonight that, um, you know, I, I'm, I, we need to make sure we keep the funding that we have coming now to us. So, just a comment. But thank you very much yes, for all agree. your good work. Thank you. You're welcome. And I want to say that this is the first time I have good news to present it. It's always been doom and gloom, you know, when I make this presentation. But honestly, SB1 makes such a huge difference um, for everyone. It does. And thank you again. I appreciate all your work. No further comments? We're done. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. We'll take a five-minute break, and then we'll start the next meeting. Does, does the board have any questions for Mr. Pope or the other gentleman? No? Guess no, not. We're start fixing the roads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's happening already. Let's get everybody in here and then. <laughs> this meeting to order please stand for the flag salute salute pledge i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all roll call gorilla present b smith i am here wood here Vallejo, Mock, I'm sorry, Crump, here, Cantu, Maurer, here, Prout, here, Cryer, here, Smith, here, Wegman, here, 
Couch? Here. Scrivener? Here. Kiernan? Miller? Here. Para? Here. Thank you. Thank you. And Green, I'm sorry, Green. I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> Item three, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes with the authority of the chair to extend the time limit as deemed appropriate for conducting the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Good evening, Lieutenant Ian Silva with the Kern County Sheriff's Office. I'm just here to give my uh, regular update for our uh, Kern COG uh, inmate crew contract for hazard removal and cleanup on the highways. Um, as you're probably aware, back in July we started yet another cycle or another contract cycle of, of uh, crew work. Um, since that cycle began, we have uh, put in 242 man hours of detention deputy uh, time plus another 1452 hours uh, worth of inmate labor. Uh, we calculate that as a savings of $38,419 so far. And that's just a, obviously just a couple months into the contract. Um, in the few, in the couple months since we started uh, this current cycle, we've been in Delano, Buttonwillow, Taft, and Bakersfield. We did a uh, tree trimming project on the southbound 99 near Delano. Um, we were in Buttonwillow for uh, three days in, in September, I believe, uh, prepping for an upcoming event there. Um, we've been uh, down on White Lane in Panama to do some cleanup there, and we were also in Delano near Sherwood cleaning up uh, off-ramp there. So um, like I do at the beginning of every year, uh, invite any member of the council if there's an area in your community you're concerned about that needs cleanup on the highways. Uh, please don't hesitate to call my office. I know some of you contact uh, Sergeant D Dixie Walters directly or contact me. Either way, whichever is uh, convenient, we'll get a crew out there. If it's in our realm of operation that we can do, we're happy to run out there and see what we can make happen for you. Uh, unless there are any questions, that concludes my presentation. We uh, do have questions. We do. Yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, driving, do you, you maintain 58 in both east and westbound within the Bakersfield limits, correct? We have been in that, those areas, yes. You know, driving in today, um, it, it doesn't look like anything has been accomplished on that and even where the K rails are in the middle it just seems to be a lot of accumulation of stuff uh, like it, it, which could be if someone had to pull over could be damaging to their tires vehicle or what have you do you actually have crews that take care of that portion or how is that maintained um, we 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 send our crews kind of on a request basis. I mean, we do hunt around the community. If, if we don't have a request, we'll look for areas. I'm not sure when the last time we've hit that exact area. You're talking about 58 in the in the Bakersfield area? Yes. Go in east and westbound, you were Yes, sir. Okay. I'll, I'll send a, a crew to scout that area out and see uh, what we can do. I know that's an area that, that's sometimes difficult to keep up with. It seems like I've seen it get clean, and then before too long, it's it's uh, messy again. I hate to say. But you don't do the weed abatement. Who who yeah. takes care of that? That I'm not sure yeah. certain who does Calcium. the weed abatement. Yeah. We do so, we do oh, some sorry. lightweight clearing. We'll get to you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry if I'm fronting anyone else <laughs> out. <laughs> Hurry. We we do do a little. We are do, able to do some clearing of, of weed and stuff uh, okay. of of weed area, but we're not fully capable of handling weed abatement for large scale areas so yeah. well i appreciate that i think we can all do better in in, in our communities as well so well, thank th you thank you for pointing thank those you. areas out thank we'll you sir got that out and see what we can thank do you. madam chair i have a question yes, for staff sir. um i have a question for for staff and it's related to this um the contract with the bakersfield homeless center that the city has how much of the metro area are they in charge of does it, i know it's the 99 corridor but does it also include the 58 corridor in the metro area because i thought that um, the sheriff's department was focusing on the outlying areas with their crews, but where how do we differentiate that? that that's correct the, the city crews concentrate on the city limits, but uh, may, We may be talking about East Bakersfield, which is unincorporated um, I'll I'll take a look and see exactly where uh, the line is, but supervisor Scribner you're, you're correct the Bakersfield contract comp generally concentrates on the metro area um, 
and they sometimes do not cross over into the county areas, even the county areas that are within the metro area. And the sheriff's department has been uh, concentrating on everything other than the Bakersfield metro area. Okay, so be perhaps before you go out and scout, maybe we could get some, some clarification for them as far as what areas we're expecting them to take care of that's in the metro, but not necessarily in the incorporated area. Okay, thank and you. We, and we can coordinate and make sure. Appreciate it. That's not a problem. Yes, thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you. Any more public comments? Good evening, members of the committee. My name is Jerry Breckenridge, and I am the newly appointed city manager for the city of Oregon. And I'm uh, really here to just introduce myself so you can put a, a face to the name. Uh, fortunately, I'm not new to Arvin. I, I was the police chief prior to that. Uh, and over the past six months, I've become familiar with uh, Kern Cog and have had the opportunity to work with Mr. Hakimi, who's been very helpful uh, to the city of Arvin. Uh, I know we have challenges, but I know that um, uh, Kern Cog is going to help us get past those challenges and turn those into opportunities. So again, I just wanted to introduce myself. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm big on uh, networking and I'm big on partnerships and taking advantage of resources that are made available to us. So uh, I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Well, I would like to introduce city of Wasco's new city manager, Daniel Ortiz. Thank you very much. Uh, I believe this is probably day nine on the job officially, <laughs> day 10 unofficially, but uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, I'm originally from Los Angeles, but I spent the last few years in the Midwest between Nebraska and Iowa, serving the last two years in Webster City, Iowa as a city manager there. So look forward to the opportunity of being here. I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Any other public comments? Seeing none, we will move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda all items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kerncock staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the committee or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the committee concerning the item before each action is taken. We have items A through I. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote. Gorola? Yes. E. Smith? Yes. Wood? Yes. Vallejo? Crump? Yes. Cantu? Mauer? Yes. Kraut? Yes. Cryer? Yes. P. Smith? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Couch? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Kiernan? Miller? Yes. Green? Yes. Para? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five. 2017 Federal Transportation Improvement Program Draft Amendment Number 18. Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Amendment Number 18 to the 2017 Federal Transportation Improvement Program includes revisions to the State Highway Operations and Protection Program, Regional Surface Transportation Program, Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Program, and the Transit Program. The public review period began September 7th and ends September 21st. The Kern Cog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on September 24th. State and federal approval is required. At this time, I ask that the Chair please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Okay, we'll open the public hearing. Do we have any comments from the public? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And we don't vote on this, right? Okay. No. Number six, 2019 Federal Transportation Improvement Program Draft Amendment Number One. Ms. Pacheco. Amendment Number One to the 2019 Federal Transportation Improvement Program includes revisions to the State Highway Operation and Protection Program, Regional Service Transportation Program, Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Program, and the Transit Program. 
The public review period began September 7th and ends September 21st. The Kerncog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on September 24th. State and federal approval is required. And at this time, I ask the chair to please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Okay, we will open the public hearing. Do we have any comments from the public? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Thank you. You're welcome. Item number seven, public hearing, unmet transit needs in Kern County. Mr. Snotty. Thank you, Chairman and members of the committee. First of all, I'd like to thank all of the member agencies for assisting me in getting this process done. We start out every year the first week of January, and tonight is the conclusion of that process. I was able to get out to McFarland, California City, and Ridgecrest, and it's always a pleasure to visit your communities. California Public Utilities Code Section 99401.5 requires that current Council of Governments annually identify any unmet transit needs and those that are reasonable to meet. Kern Cog will uh, conduct a public hearing tonight prior to making a final determination. We have, uh, through newspaper advertisements, members of the public were requested to provide their input. Public input was also obtained through public hearings held in cities, rural communities of Kern and Golden Empire Transit. Kern Cog's Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee, SSTAC, reviewed the results of these public hearings. At its July 18, 2018 meeting, the Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed a countywide analysis of unmet transit needs to be provided by Kern Cog staff and determined that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet within Kern County, conditioned upon the county in Kern and California uh, City reporting the same finding, and they have met that qualification as of tonight. So tonight, we're requesting that you open up the public hearing and uh, we are recommending that uh, you find that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet in Kern County and authorize the chair to sign resolution number 1832. Okay, we'll open the public hearing. Do we have any comments from the public? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and we have a roll call vote. I motion. move staff's recommendation. Excuse me, I'm jumping the gun here. I'll make that motion. Second. Roll call vote. Garola? Yes. B. Smith? Yes. Wood? Yes. Vallejo? Crump? Yes. Cantu? Mauer? Yes. Prout? Yes. Cryer? Yes. P. Smith? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Couch? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Kiernan? Miller? Yes. Para? Yes. Thank you. Caltrans report. Good evening. Uh, the first project I want to report on is the Famoso um, State Route 46 99 bridge replacement. Uh, they're going to be pouring uh, the deck, and they're also uh, contractors working on the east side um, State Route 46 ramp. And then moving on to the next project, uh, that's <coughs> this is the State Route um, 99 uh, Tap Highway rehabilitation. It's near the city of Bakersfield from north of Herring Road, over crossing to Pacheco Road, undercrossing. So within the section of highway between Pacheco undercrossing to just south of the State Route 119 overcrossing, there's going to be nightly closures, um, and that will be from um, Sunday to Thursday to complete the following work. They're going to do shoulder work, joint seal work. They're going to do some final striping, which is scheduled for next week. And currently, uh, of the four lanes, only uh, three are open within this section. And then the next section of work um, between south of State Route 119 to just south of Houghton, Houghton Road. Houghton Road? Thank you. Road overcrossing. And this, is, this work is behind the K-Rail because um, they do have, um, of the three lanes there, um, they do still have two lanes open to traffic. And the work that's going to happen next week is rebarb replacement, and then concrete placement is scheduled uh, between September 24th and October 1st. Uh, also, um, southbound on and off ramps between Houghton, Houghton, Houghton Road is currently closed. 
anticipated to be open in mid-October. There is a detour in place, and what they're doing is sending traffic to the next ramp at uh, State Route 223. Their anticipated completion of this project is March of next year. Uh, the next project is our State Route 46, uh, Segment 4A. Um, that's um, between Lost Hills and I-5. The West Side Canal construction is completed. Contractor continues bridge construction at I-5 Bridge and Main Flood Canal Bridge. PG&E has not started relocation of underground utilities. However, construction is working with PG&E to avoid any project delays. We're okay for now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we're working with them and we don't anticipate any delays and if there is I'm not I won't be I'll send someone else to report on that um, Cottonwood East Rehab um, that's on State Route 58 in Bakersfield from the Cottonwood undercrossing to just east of State Route uh, 158 and the 184 separation the median work is complete and the contractor is moved to the eastbound outside lane to begin lane and shoulder replacement. Cache Creek bridge replacement on 58. Uh, that's eight miles east of Tehachapi from Sand Canyon overhead to just 0.5 miles east of Cache Creek. The project was awarded, just recently awarded to Granite Construction. However, the bids came in over programmed um, for the amount of the project originally the um, originally programmed so we will be going to CTC in October for uh, supplemental funds so we'll be taking care of that issue and moving on with this project so I'll look forward to reporting on it when it goes into construction and that's all I had unless there's anything that questions or comments no you're not allowed thanks Gail um, <laughs> This is only my second visit here. I'm Brink Green, oh, director you were for, ask me a no, you are allowed for uh, District project. 9 <laughs> yeah, out of Bishop, uh, which includes Eastern Kern County. Thank you for having me. We've um, joined Gail here, participating for the last uh, six months or so. It's been a joy to do that. Nice. We've really in, uh, gained a lot. Earlier today, we met with the city of Tehachapi. Um, I think sitting over lunch and, and getting the maps out and really hearing the concerns and the issues and things goes a long way which I think is one of the things that we do here is very valuable. <coughs> Tomorrow we're meeting with Cal City. Um, similarly, the package you have tonight does include something that I, I think we'll make as a standard um, every month when we attend. It's just uh, Eastern Kern County projects. I don't really intend to go over these, but this gives a good snapshot of where we're at. Obviously, if you have questions about any of these, we'll be happy to, to bring those up. Um, I also am gonna pass out I think you got this same map last time but it does show um, SB1 in part requires uh, Caltrans to do a 10-year plan that shows um, our intent to bring fair and poor pavement up to a good condition as well as many other assets this particular chart shows the projects in Eastern Kern County over that that 10-year period of time um, the color coding shows at what year the construction is intended. Um, the reason that we've noted with the SB1 symbol is that those schedules are, are based on the current funding. If SB1, if Prop 6 were to pass, mm -hmm. then um, some of these projects could possibly go away. More likely they would be delayed. And another strategy that I think probably the county also employs is that to do a, a less robust um, Payment strategy, which would be perhaps less expensive, but also, um, you know, basically be a band aid, which of course is not what we want to do. But that shows those projects. Um, I think I'm kind of keeping the, the fun, the good news to last, I guess, if, if that's the case. You also have in your, your folder um, a series of articles where um, Aaron Akimi and others have been um, quoted. Uh, describing Caltrans current process for uh, developing a project initiation document for uh, truck climbing lanes heading east eastbound from Bakersfield up to Tehachapi as you may recall some of you may recall several years ago there was a, a project initiation document that was primarily in um, 
Kern County, closer to Bakersfield, that showed a couple locations. We're relooking at that holistically, not based on District 9 or District 6 Caltrans, but that whole corridor to Hatchapi. What we have so far is, and you won't be able to see it, but I think you, you'll be able to get the gist of it, is that we're, we've basically done a, a study so far, this is just real rough, on um, that whole route from Bakersfield up to Tehachapi in terms of the locations, the grades, the topography, um, where it makes sense to have the um, truck climbing lanes, where they may um, uh, start and end, the priority. Oh, was it that helpful? There we go. Um, and, and so, oh, I didn't realize that. Help, oh, camera, here you go. So anyway, this is, um, you know, we don't have handouts of this. This is just something we got literally right before the meeting. The, the companion document to that is actually, you know, Google Earth map, which shows those same post mile limits. And again, um, it's, you know, it's, it's very, very hot off the press. We're just starting the study now. We have a significant amount of outreach to do from the communities and each of you that are impacted by that to find out if, if these same locations make sense. So we're, we're quite a ways away from um, finishing that. We're hoping that project education document would be done after, after the first of the year, no later than the next June. So there's a lot to, to be done on that yet. Um, funding, of course, that's the big thing. Uh, Aaron and I and several others are constantly looking for fund sources for, for different types of projects, including a project that is, I, I think that this is a project that will have very little resistance um, from at uh, least uh, constituent wise for this. I mean, I think that there's really no question in just about anybody's mind here in terms of the need for this project. The real question is, is you know, a, a funding plan to make this happen. So I don't have any other questions unless you have questions for me. Pleasure once again to be here. Any questions for Mr. Green? I have Go a question, ahead. Madam Chair, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, Gail, I, I see that District 9 is putting in <coughs> charging stations at their rest stops. Can we expect some of those in District 6? Yeah, we actually did a bid and we have 10 locations in, in District 6. Oh. Okay. Is that you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Would, would you mind bringing that information back next month? I sure can. Thank you. Yep. Phil? You good? Yeah. Okay. Moving right along. Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Madam Chair and Board Members. I have several items on this agenda. Uh, California High Speed um, Rail will be meeting in Bakersfield, having a full board meeting on October 16th. They are likely to adopt um, what is generally known as the F Street alignment, and they will also be discussing the Bakersfield to Palmdale alignment. That meeting will be October 16th in Bakersfield. Um, Kern County Fair started on Wednesday. We have a booth there right next to the cinnamon roll booth, as usual. <laughs> if you have uh, time, please stop by. And we are being assisted this year by Caltrans, Kern County staff, Gold Empire Transit staff, Amtrak staff, any, any other agent? Calvan. So, so we're partnering with our partner agencies. Um, and we expect it's worked out well as a test last year. We're going to continue to expand our <coughs> partners. So if any of your city employees or county employees, well, there's already some county employees assisting us, want to join us uh, next year, please let us know. Uh, the uh, CDAC meeting in Sacramento will be September 25th. Ride Share Week, I've been asked to remind you several times, is October 1st to 5th. We have flyers and materials here if you want more information. The CTC will be meeting October 17th and 18th in Stockton. Gail mentioned that um, District 6 will be attending. Uh, staff here met with Caltrans and the city of Arvin uh, to assist them with uh, ATP projects on August 10th and 13th. And I'd like to add to that um, su Supervisor Couch um, has been active with um, the meetings that we have with, uh, s I, I've mentioned them in the past, when we meet with Los Angeles County and um, the cities in Los Angeles and Southern California, SCAG meetings. He's also been active 
with Le League of Cities when he was with the cities and now with CSAC. Uh, he suggested that we look into uh, the idea of Kern County uh, working with Arvin to assist them on some of their projects that you may have heard about in the news. Thank you, Supervisor Couch. Um, our last meeting with uh, City of Arvin included County of Kern, C County of Kern. Uh, looks like we've reached agreement. Supervisor Couch will be assisting um, City of Arvin working with the COG and working with Caltrans uh, to get them through the issues that they have on their project. Thank you. Um, some of you may have seen today or yesterday in the Californian the ASCE, American Society of Civil Engineers report card is a national survey is out for Kern County. I believe Kern County's infrastru infrastructure received a grade of C. Uh, unlike Margot's presentation earlier, I would not be too happy if my son came home with C's. <laughs> Uh, up on the screens, it's been running since uh, Ms. Yap's presentation, uh, are maybe a little bit hard to see, are some pictures of bus wraps. Those bus wraps are in, uh, so far in s on the city of Delano buses and Golden Empire Transit buses, and you will shortly see them on county buses. I, I want to thank Supervisor Couch again. So this. This is a culmination of over a year of, of effort that started with Supervisor Couch and Council Member Pasquale. Uh, um, first, we talked with um, City of Delano. City of Delano did not allow advertising on their buses. City of Delano, working with Supervisor Couch and Kern Cog, um, changed their rules to allow advertising. Uh, many of you know Supervisor Couch also is on the Air District Board and we uh, jointly came up with the idea that was eventually pushed through by Supervisor Couch of we know, and you've seen it all around the county, you've seen it in the TV, internet, billboards, the Air District spends literally millions of dollars each year on advertising. Why not send some of that money back to our agencies on our buses to help our agencies meet the fare box return? And I know all of you are familiar with the fare box calculation and how um, advertising income can be used to help your all your cities achieve uh, the required fare box ratio. So thank you, Supervisor Couch, and I know he's not here anymore, uh, uh, Council Member Pasquale, who helped make that happen. Subject to your questions, Madam Chair, that concludes my report on this agenda. Any questions for Mr. Hakimi from the board? Any member statements? Seeing none, we'll move on to the oh, one member statement. I just wanted to thank Kern Cog. Um, Get is going to have on the rideshare day golden tickets that will be placed underneath the seats in the buses. And Kern Cog was nice enough to give us some um, gift cards. So you people who get the golden tickets from their seat, they'll be able to redeem those golden tickets for some gift cards on rideshare day. So right. thank you, Kern Cog. What time are you going to put them in? It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice little perk. All right, moving on to our next agenda, Kern Council of Governments. Roll call. Gorolla. Present. B. Smith. I'm here. Wood. Here. Vallejo. Nauer. Here. Cantu. Trout. Yes, I'm here. Cryer. Yes. P. Smith? Here. Wegman? Yes. Couch? Here. Scrivener? Here. And Crump? Here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the council. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none, we will move over to the consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. We have items A through E. Second. Roll call vote. Corolla. Yes. B. Smith. 
Yes. Wood? Yes. Vallejo? Crump? Yes. Cantu? Mauer? Yes. Kraut? Yes. Cryer? Yes. P. Smith? Yes. Couch? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Wigman? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, appointment of community at large members to the Regional Planning Advisory Committee, Ms. Napier. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. The RPAC bylaws provide for appointment of three at large members representing varied economic, social, and geographic sectors of Kern County. Uh, we currently have one um, opening. Applications were received from the following individuals. Asha Chandy, Program Manager for Bike Bakersfield. Jasmine Del Aguila, Policy Advocate for Leadership Council for Justice and Accountability. Donna Jackson, um, representing Kern Transit. And Lorraine Unger, volunteer for the Kern Cahuilla chapter of the Sierra Club. Um, Executive Director Aaron Hakimi reviewed and verified applicant eligibility as required by the RPAC bylaws. The term of the new member will begin at the next regularly scheduled RPAC meeting on October 3rd, 2018. And the action is to make one appointment of a community at large member to the RPAC. Mr. Smith. Thank you. I would nominate uh, Asha Chandy for the appointment for RPAC. I'll second. So, we're going to vote on this? It, voice vote. Voice vote. All in favor say aye. All in favor aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Got that. She's, your, she's the new RPAC. Um, executive director's report. Good evening again, Madam Chair and board members. Ms. Napier and I, along with staff and elected officials from the other seven uh, Central Valley counties and a member from the um, Amtrak JPA and a member from the Air District were in Washington last week. Uh, we, we met with EPA staff, DOT staff, <coughs> and the majority of our um, members of the House and uh, the Senate. Uh, worthwhile trip. We'll be going again in a year. Please uh, let me know if any of you would, li would like to attend. One of the items that did come up is the current federal transportation bill expires in just about exactly two years from now. Uh, Congress is beginning the process of uh, developing a new transportation bill. Over the next couple of years, they'll be looking for input. The Kern County Association of Cities dinner Next one uh, will be hosted by Kern Cog right across the street at the historic Woolworths Luncheonette. It'll be October 29th, 2018. All of you are invited, including the former city council members that are now county supervisors. You're welcome to join us. Um, so I'll finish with some great news. Uh, if you remember last month, we adopted our RTP, SES, and uh, the environmental document that accompanied that. That was a culmination of four years of work. Um, our, s our attorney, not the one sitting next to me, our attorney that we hired for the CEQA doc document has reported that yesterday was the deadline for a CEQA suit and so far nothing has been filed. So congratulations to all your staffs uh, and all of you. Uh, got through another four-year cycle without uh, any legal action. In your finally, in your folder tonight, a copy of Ms. Yap's uh, presentation, uh, outreach efforts for September, timeline that covers the next four months, the article that uh, Mr. Green mentioned, which I believe was published both in the Bakersfield Californian and in the Tatchby News, and he told me this afternoon in Tehachapi that uh, KUZZ is planning on doing a story about it. And I've heard from multiple sources, it was, there was also a TV report about it, that there is uh, a surprising amount of interest from 
just the general average person uh, of, uh, of getting that project done. Not, not just people that live in Tatchby or work in Tatchby, but almost everyone here that has driven that route can uh, understand what it's like to when two trucks going 30 miles an hour get in front of them. Uh, yeah, one's going 29 and one's going 31. <laughs> and they're, they're drag then racing. They, then they change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, a copy of uh, the Eastern Kern County projects Mr. Green mentioned. A customized um, brochure that Kern Cog staff worked with and created for the city of McFarland that can be customized to your city if you like. It's based on some work we did for Shafter, highlighting uh, just, just how advantageous it is to locate uh, a distribution center such as Amazon, as an example, in, in Kern County. Uh, hi highlights uh, the benefits of locating in Kern County. Aaron, can you send that to us digitally? This right here? Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, Mr. Thank Ball you. will both post it on our website and send it out to everybody by email. Uh, copy of the ASCE infrastructure report card that I mentioned a few minutes ago and that was featured in a Californian story yesterday or today. And finally, a schedule of cash disbursements for July and August. Subject to any of your questions, Madam. Any members' comments? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, I just want to again recognize our new city manager. Uh, we did. We believe that he did an excellent job as uh, chief of police. The two. Uh, years that he was with us in that role. We did a nationwide search and uh, I'm confident that uh, he has what it takes to see Arvin through the next chapter. Uh, as uh, was uh, spoken earlier, yes, we have a few hiccups and a few challenges and he has been uh, right at the forefront of helping us see through that. And so uh, I want to thank the COG, I want to thank the County of Kern and Caltrans for the work that uh, they're doing to work with us to see us through uh, this issue. And I think that this we're going to be working on what's best for the city, for Caltrans, and for this organization, Kern Cog. So thank you, and welcome again. Thank you, Jose. Any other comments? I want to thank Caltrans for coming again today and, and informing us on all yeah. the projects that are going on. We truly appreciate that. Um, we've got our two new city managers here today. That's a good thing, too, for our smaller cities. And I want to thank everybody for all their hard work. This meeting's adjourned. Thank you.